welcome to the Library Loud Hela, the monthly podcast of the National Library of New Zealand, Te Puna Mātauranga o Aotearoa. My name is Mary Hay and together with Sean McMahon we'll be sharing some of the unique voices and stories from our library staff and collections. Kia ora koutou katoa whanau, and welcome to the Christmas edition of the Library Loud Hela. Today in the studio we have a couple of special guests. We have Audrey Waugh from the Alexander Turnbull Library, Research Librarian for Manuscripts, and Paul Diamond, Māori Curator, who will be joining us later on. Today we, we will be presenting some Christmas items from the collection, a short series of stories, poems and songs. To start us off, Audrey, would you like to read your first item? Yeah. Kia ora tato. Um, today I'll be talking about Edna Crompton's Letter to Father Christmas, and I know a few of you will be writing your Christmas wish lists now, so you might get some inspiration from this one. Letters written to Father Christmas by children today are likely to contain requests for items like PlayStations, iPads and mobile phones, but it was a different story in 1913 when eight-year-old Edna Crompton wrote this missive to the North Pole. Dear Father Christmas, Please will you bring me the list which I write down and the ones that I tick you must be sure to bring. Number one, a thumb bible. Two, a doll's head. Three, a box of good paints. Four, a nice picture book. Five, a small doll's house. Six, some orange, apples and nuts. Seven, a box of chocolates. Eight, a good notebook. Nine, a pretty money box. 10. A toy. Now I must close. A loving friend, Edna. P.S. Don't bring German things. Perhaps the most poignant aspect of this letter is the postscript, Don't bring German things. With the outbreak of the First World War just eight months away, the war clouds gathered over Europe had obviously had an impact on little Edna. I know a few of these things might still be on my Christmas wish list. I love the idea of a thumb Bible, a tiny little Mm. um, printed Bible that was quite popular with children at the time. I like the box of chocolates. <laughs> so have you been good this year, Audrey? I think I'll be on the nice list this year. Yeah, and Mary, were you on the naughty list this year? <laughs> the good list, the naughty list? I think Not I'm, for me to say, sure. No, Not I think I'm on the naughty say. list. I want a surfboard, but I've been told I have to buy it myself, so <laughs> I will do that. So in 1951, the... Santa Claus, an unidentified Santa Claus, took a trip on Teal out to the Chatham Islands. This was the first trip by plane to the islands which had only previously been accessible by boat. More than 400 people, 80% of the island's population, turned out at Tifunga Lagoon to greet Santa as he came ashore by launch, carrying a large sack of toys. Gifts were handed out from beneath two large Christmas trees and from Lucky Dip-style brand tubs set out on the beach. The Evening Post at the time recorded, in the three and a quarter hours he distributed good cheer, the islanders, all in paper hats, consumed several bottles of whiskey and soft drinks, numerous cartons of strawberries, 48 chocolate ice creams, 60 dozen ice cream blocks and 10 gallons of ice cream, estimated to produce 450 iced lollies. A collection of photographs of the Alexander Turnbull Library includes several taken aboard this flight, which includes a sheepdog that broke out of its crate during the flight to investigate its surroundings in a passenger compartment which had been converted for the carriage of innumerable crates of bananas, sausages and other goods. Among the other guests in the flying boat were the well-known footballer Russell Hohaya of Taranaki and Myra Tuutua of Big Bush, who were going home to the Chatham Islands to be married from Myra's home. This entry and many others are available in the 2008 Turnbull Library publication called A New Zealand Christmas and edited by Sarah L. Now we might run across to Mary. What have you got for us, Mary? I've got a poem from the Ashburton Guardian, volume 33, issue 8446, 24th of December 1912. And it's called A Health to Christmas Time. Come fill up the waiting beaker, may our spirits ne'er be weaker, may our tempers ne'er get meeker as we pass the cup along. May our wits be never rusty, may our hearts be never crusty, may our souls be ever lusty, 
Here's a jolly Christmas song. Like a finer sense revealing or a fragrance or a stealing comes the grand old Christmas feeling that our minds and hearts doth fill. Tis a strain we cannot measure, tis a sense of tender pleasure, and the thoughts we love to treasure are the thoughts of peace, goodwill. While the Christmas tree is bearing gifts that soon we will be sharing, let us sing a song, not caring, as we hear the merry chime, what our foes are thinking of us while the holly waves above us with the best of girls to love us. Here's a health to Christmas time. Christmas is about food and eating and we've got a menu here from 1917 from the 13th Battery, 3rd Brigade, New Zealand Field Artillery. But before I read that, I'll just read a letter that Private Henry Burke wrote home to his mother from Belgium on Christmas Day 1917. So it's a similar time and gives us a sense of um, what, what people were experiencing, or soldiers were experiencing when this menu happened. So... Henry writes to his mother, This doesn't seem much like Christmas. It is snowing away outside and the ice on the pools is about eight inches thick. A bit of a mortar, about half an inch square, hit me on the shoulder. It went through my overcoat, coat, jersey and shirt, but stopped at the flannel singlet. It was a good thick singlet and I haven't had a chance of changing it for about a month, so I suppose its resisting qualities were improved. And here's the menu. West Hook, NZFA, Christmas 1917, The Spooks Dugout, Late Hotel, De Fritz Machine Guns, Menu, Dinner, Entrees, Steaker da Kid Pud, Joints, Stiff or Otherwise, Poultry, Roast Heartless Turkey, Vegetables, Baked Spuds and Ura's Boiled Green Peas, Puddings, Duff Ordinaire Vic Custard, Fruits, Strawberries, Apricots, Peaches, Blanc mange, jellies, sweets, nuts, wines, beer, spirits, cigars, cigarettes. Sounds like they had a great time. Thank you, Sean. And so what are you cooking for Christmas Day, Mary? Uh, we will have chicken and ham and probably a vegetarian option as well. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And you, Audrey? It won't be Christmas without Mum's trifle, so we've always got to have the big multi-layered trifle. Oh, fantastic. Mary's pulling a face, but it's my favourite thing on the Christmas table. Is it a brandy trifle? Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Of course. That sounds fantastic. I might come around to your day for Christmas. <laughs> I won't share my trifle. <laughs> right, so... Speaking of dinner, actually, uh, the next item I'll read is the Parsons Christmas Dinner. And this comes from The Globe, which was the first Canterbury Evening newspaper in uh, 1875. So a lot of their stories are picked up from the English media, and this is obviously an English story. The Parsons Christmas Dinner. Half a century ago, a minister in Hertfordshire used at Christmas time to be inundated with hamsters filled with good things. On one occasion, an enormous turkey was sent to him by the thoughtful kindness of a neighbouring farmer. But as the minister's family had already provided for the Christmas dinner, the bird was sent into the market and sold. A passer-by, seeing this fine specimen of poultry, said, What a splendid turkey! It's just a thing for the parson's Christmas dinner! And to the parson it was sent. The prudent wife sent it a second time to the market and sold it on again for a handsome sum. Another friend, similarly struck with the magnificent proportions of the turkey, purchased it and also sent it to the parson. The parson, not wishing to fly in the face of providence, the good man said at last, It is very clear that the Lord means for us to have this turkey. And with the entire approbation of the family it formed part of the Christmas dinner well I hope I have a number of turkeys I mean if there's three turkeys I'll eat three turkeys yeah. won't I popular around Christmas was postcards and Audrey I think you've got a, another postcard that was popular during the, the war I think isn't it yeah, the Turnbull has a whole bunch of Christmas cards, and if you've been good, you've already sent yours out. I haven't this year. Um, but this one here is called Hands Across the Sea, and it was a really popular wartime Christmas greeting. 
Um, it uses the imagery of hands clasped across distances, which some of us might be feeling this year with family overseas. Um, and in this postcard, it contrasts the desolation of the battlefields of France with an iconic image of a small red roof New Zealand farmhouse with a view of the sea surrounded by native flax and cabbage trees. The front of the card bears the poem For England, home and beauty, for Christmas and for you, with heart and hands across the sea, here comes my greeting, true. The message on the back is brief but poignant, perhaps written between brothers. It was written in Foxton on September 24th, 1917. Dear Harry, just a few lines to let you know we're home on our holidays again, and I only wish you were here too. The old farm is looking as well as ever, only it is a bit too much for Dad to keep it going. They're hoping you'll be home soon again to look after it well. I hope you are as well as when it leaves us at present. I remain, yours ever, Tom. And there are a few different things that you could include on your on your Christmas postcards and greetings. And I think up next we've got some ideas for you. Kia ora, Paul. Kia ora, Welcome Sean. to the show. Kia ora. So... We've got here in front of us this interesting little typed document, and it's from Hare Hongi Stoll. Now, he was born in 1859, died in 1944, and belonged to the Ngāpuhi Iwi. Very high-profile man of his day, and um, was an interpreter and a scholar, and that's probably one of the reasons he came up with this little list of Christmas and New Year greetings in exact Māori and English, and it's dated 1931 in Wellington. So he's grouped his greetings by, uh, they're in three sections. So the first section is Christmas greetings, beginning with Kia Naho Tō Kirihimete. Merry be thy Christmas. Kia Kua Kua Tō Kirihimete. Joyous be thy Christmas. Kia Nui Nga Painga O Tō Kirihimete. May all good things attend the Christmas. He mihi Kirihimete atsu i nu tīrini. Christmas greetings from New Zealand. Kirihimete mihi Māori atsu i nu tīrini. Māori Christmas greetings from New Zealand. Kia tino ahua reka tō kirihimete. Best of happiness attend thy Christmas. Now the second of these three uh, sections that Mr Stoll has grouped his greetings under is New Year greetings, beginning with Kia ora i tō tau hau. Good health be with thy new year. Kia wai māori e i tō tau hau. Good fortune attend thy new year. Pārea atsu a muri ko te tau hau. Away with the past, tis the new year. Ko e te tau tawhito, ko e hoki te tau hau. Applaud the old year, acclaim the new year. Haere rā te tau tawhito, no mai te tau hau. Farewell the old year, Welcome the new year. Kia tino pai rawa tēnei tau hau. May this new year be the very best yet. And then the final of these groupings of Mr Stoll's greetings is Christmas and New Year greetings, starting with hei krihi me te nahau, hei tau hau a huareka. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Nā tino hia hia o te wā. The best wishes of the season. Tino mihi Māori o te wā. Best Māori greetings of the season. Tsukua kia paheke atsu na pauri, no mai na painga ke mua. Let disappointment slip away, welcome the good things in store. Kaua a muri e tangi hia, ingari ko mua manoko hia. Weep not for the past, but have faith in the future. Ma na hau muri tai e taki mai tō tau hau. May prosperous breezes waft in thy new year. So, some lovely sentiments mm. in there and lots of choices for people for their Christmas cards and greetings uh, and giving you an idea of what the language was like in 1931. Indeed. So would you say that's like old Māori or parts of it would be, wouldn't be used today in the same sort of structure? What you see in this is how strong the um, transliterations were. Mm. English words would be sort of converted into Māori, so new tēdini, which, mm. you know, goes a long way back in terms of use. Um, and the other interesting thing is that, oh, kirihimeti, of course, for Christmas, um, but 
These days, if you talk about New Year, you're probably talking about Matariki, which was a thing, and I'm sure Mr. Stoll would have known about it, but he would have thought about it as an astrological um, phenomenon in terms of the appearance of Matariki. He would have known all about it. But, uh, you know, this celebration of a Māori New Year, which is a totally different time of the mm, year, mm. was a different thing. So uh, this was how it was talked about at that stage, 1931. Mm. And I wonder if there was many people taking him up on his offer for putting them on cards. It's quite an unusual. He must have been getting a few demands for uh, Māori translations for people to use. Well, this is in that period, I think, where people called their children, um, you know, Nao and things. Mm. You know, they, they, a lot of Māori was fashionable mm. and Māori design art was fashionable and people like um, Hari Hongi Stoll, who used to be in the papers all the time, were the people you went to for advice about that. Mm. So, yeah, it would be interesting to see if they were used. But still, lovely sentiments. Mm, mm. Absolutely. Kia ora. Yeah, well, kapai. Kia ora, Paul. Tēnā koe. Right. We're getting near the end of the show now, so we thought we'd go out with a song, a Christmas song, called Star of Wonder. This is the version recorded by Fred Dagg, who was... Real name was John Clark. If you were around in the 1970s, you'd know Fred Dagg. He was New Zealand's most popular uh, most popular comedian, and the Fred Dagg moniker was a farmer from Thai Happy. So this is going to be our version of Star of Wonder, and if you want to hear the original, you can go to the show notes on the National Library website under the podcast, under the blog, which will have all the details. So, one, two, three. Kings of Orient are one on a tractor, two in a car, one on a scooter, two in his hooter, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star of beauty, she'll be right, star of glory, that's the story, following yonder star. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, everyone. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, thank you, Audrey, for coming into the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Merry Christmas, everyone. There's Santa. Santa's coming in with our Christmas presents. I'd just like to give out a shout out to uh, Jay Busenberg, who's our sound engineer and has been recording the show, to Aaron Wanoa, who's our producer, who's away on a holiday, and to you, our lovely listeners, for listening to us through our first year of uh, Library Loud Hailer. Thank you for tuning in. And we're going to go out on some Christmas music, and we'll see you back in the new year. Go well. Stay safe. Look after each other. Kia kaha.